Have you ever wondered what They Might Be Giants have been up to since you stopped listening to them? I was a huge fan at one time, but lost touch with them over the years. It's time to go back. Here's a look at their 2013 album, Nanobots. This is the vinyl copy. I'm going to open this one and then check out the packaging and then listen to it a bunch of times and come back and talk about the music. Nanobots came out in 2013, right after the Join Us album. I bought this directly from They Might Be Giants merchandise store, so they got a little money. Actually, no, it's not true. This one actually came free. It was buy one, get one free, and they give you free nanobots. But I would have bought it, so they lost out on some money. Anyway, here we go. Let's open the package and see what it looks like inside. I got some special soap and washed my hands for about three hours, scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing until the skin came off and the uh, skin doctor called and said stop it to make sure that I would not harm this pristine and beautiful virgin album jacket. I'm not opening this very well, am I? Tear it, tear it more. Let's see, if I was a real vinyl collector, I'd make sure to keep this sticker intact, but I don't really care. All right, all right, here we go. Here we go, nanobots, what's inside? Hey, it's the first one that actually has a printed inner sleeve. That's cool. Okay, here are a whole bunch of names. Oh, this is the Instant Fan Club Super President Roll Call. Uh, on this side, we have another one of the collages and some basic information about They Might Be Giants, who produced it, who played on it, and let's see what the vinyl looks like. This is nice. It's actually kind of, kind of thick. Okay, the vinyl. Uh, come on out. Come on out. I hate touching the vinyl, but whatever. I, I washed those hands. Okay, label number one does not have song titles again, but does have a cool collage, a grotesque, a grotesquerie from They Might Be Giants. And Nanobots, They Might Be Giants 2. More grotesquerie. And this is going to be awesome. Ooh, there's a bunch of there's a weird line of dust on this record. I do have a record cleaner. I'll probably clean this. Ooh, that's really dirty. I'll clean this one before I play it on the record player. Okay, let's go check it out. What does the music sound like on Nanobots? Okay, I've been listening to Nanobots, not Nanobots, a lot, and here are my thoughts. The structure of Nanobots is a little different than other recent They Might Be Giants albums because there are several very short pieces amongst the longer, more normal songs. I call them snippets. So there are 25 tracks listed. Of those, nine are less than one minute. One is just five seconds. So in all, there are about 16 full songs and 9 snippets on the album, depending on how you count them. As usual, the album's songs are pretty evenly distributed between John Linnell and John Flansburg, although Flansburg seems to be more involved with the short songs and has fewer long songs than Linnell. My overall impression of the Nanobots album is that the musical textures are much richer and more wide-ranging than normal, even for TMBG. They've always mixed straight rock with avant-garde sounds and textures, of course, but on Nanobots, they are settling into some unexpected musical modes that might surprise long-term listeners. I hear echoes of everything from the residents to Aerosmith to late 60s psychedelia, deeply infused in the songs on Nanobots. I mean, it's definitely a They Might Be Giants album. It has their usual dense lyrical themes, stunning catchy pop songs, and eye-opening musical ideas that can come from any genre and serve to illustrate certain lyrical phrases. All of these elements make Nanobots a particularly enveloping They Might Be Giants album, one that relies less on sunny pop hooks and more on the listener letting themselves sink into the compelling textures and dark underworld it presents. I think I keep using the word compelling in my TMBG reviews. Well, Nanobots, it's especially necessary. This album really compels you to pay attention. It's a trip, man. I keep saying how John Linnell's songs focus on uncomfortable situations and struggling people. On Nanobots, this is still true, but it's much more acute, and there's a greater sense of urgency to the stress. Several of his songs illustrate the moment just before something big and frightening happens, or the moment just after it started. So there's a palpable sense of panic this time. I'll save the track-by-track -track analysis for the other video, but for me, the tone is set on Nanobots, for Linnell's songs at least, by the first track, You're on Fire. 
The narrator is trying to engage someone in small talk, but he's really trying to warn them that their head is on fire. Other protagonists in Linnell's songs on nanobots include someone who's just lost their mind and is wondering if they should go look for it, a guy experiencing a breakup due to his blatant Oedipal pronouncements, and someone witnessing smaller elements of something rising up and taking over, like Bark becoming ruler over the trees. Actually, that brings up another Linnell preoccupation on nanobots, the new replacing the old. The song nanobots, plus Stone Cold Coup d'etat and Replicant, all center on this theme. Linnell said that the song nanobots, at least, is about kids growing up and replacing their parents, inspired by his being the father of a teenage son. Maybe the alarm that echoes through, this, through his songs here are, are his reaction to getting older, which has long been an obsession of his. As for the songs of John Flansburg, he seems to have taken a deliberately wider view of the world for his subject matter on nanobots. I can't identify any specific themes that run through his songs except their very diversity of topics. So you get a song about a conflicted drone operator in a war and a character study of Nikola Tesla and an inevitably painful run-in with a school bully. As I said, Flansburg works hard to give nanobots its wide-ranging and exciting feel, like quickly flipping a radio dial and hearing snippets of unrelated songs and artists. On nanobots, Linnell is the sense of dread, and Flansburg is the guy actually pushing down the detonator on the TNT. And they're both irritated by the breakdown of normalcy. As for the musical approach to these songs, I'm very impressed that the two Johns and their usual producer, Pat Dillett, managed to unearth so many amazing sounds and moods. At one point, they're all funky and nervous, like early XTC, then they're using monotonous robot voices in the background, and then simple rock guitars in inspired ways, and then they're crawling through creepy, echoey undergrowth, or even breaking out the saxophones for a night at the local burlesque house. And here I want to get into the short snippets. No TMBG fan could possibly hear these without thinking of Fingertips, the legendary suite of snippets from Apollo 18. On nanobots, what you basically have are more snippets, exactly like Fingertips. And they're every bit as good as those, and would fit great alongside them in a sort of super fingertips. The thing is, though, some of the ones on nanobots blur the line between snippet and full song. For example, two of Linnell's are about a minute long, while one of Flansburg's is a minute and a half, and ends with a brain-melting psychedelic guitar solo straight out of a Jimi Hendrix concert. Another of Linnell's, Stuff His Way, is also about 90 seconds long, but doesn't really strike me as a snippet in the same way. Anyway, if you loved fingertips, you'll love that it's been reimagined on nanobots retaining the original effect while offering something very new to the experience of listening to the album. And about the vinyl LP of Nanobots, I must say that since cassettes aren't being made anymore, this vinyl record is the only way to hear Nanobots in a side one and side two format. The vast majority of fans will hear this album downloaded, streaming, or on CD, all the songs at once. Well, I must say that Nanobots in particular greatly benefits from being split up into two sides. Side one is mostly regular length songs, except for one which is less than a minute. It's a taste of things to come, but side one ends having been a fairly standard LP half. Then you have to flip over the album and begin side two, and that's where the snippets are interspersed with the other tracks. Sort of reminiscent of the Abbey Road medley, except it's not a medley. But it does want to be on its own LP side. It makes Nanobots the tale of two halves, an effect which you lose if you just listen to the whole thing without a break in the middle. Nanobots is great any way you hear it, but I'd say that listeners who first learned it on vinyl are lucky. Unfortunately, the Nanobots vinyl didn't come with printed lyrics, so I didn't get the enjoyment of listening and reading along like I did with the Else and Join Us. All I got was a list of names from their fan club. At least the inner sleeve is printed on high-quality paper and features another groovy collage. And about the art of Nanobots. The front cover is based on this painting by the artist whose name is pronounced, um, Angra? The artist Sam Weber made it into this ghoulish collage. Other collages in this series are used for the back cover and the two record labels, and as far as I can tell, these two from the vinyl labels aren't included in the CD booklet. So there. If you like the general idea, check out Weber's website because there's a bunch more. So, that's my thoughts on Nanobots. Lovely, weird, and unexpected textures abound, mixing straight-ahead rock music with spooky, atmospheric pieces and little grab-bag suites that pretty much demand that you pay close attention. There's a lot happening in these grooves. Nanobots is not passive entertainment. You, as a listener, are a participant. It's really a journey. Thanks a lot for watching. If you want an even deeper dive, check out my song-by-song -song breakdown of all 25 tracks on Nanobots. After that, the next album will be Glean. See you then.